Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, and today we're going to be talking about Opium Network. Mm. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do that. Uh, no, no bullshit here. We know that you hear that all the time, but that really helps the YouTube algorithm a lot. It push it pushes the content. So we really appreciate all the comments so far. Um, Let's keep this train going, pretty yeah, much. Absolutely. There's a lot happening, dude. A lot to cover. We're kind of like all over. Freaking place, you know what I mean? Like one day we're in freaking NFT land, the next day we're in like freaking like old old legacy like cryptocurrency land that nobody really cares about anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but all of a sudden they're resurging. Now we're going right back into what do you call this? Like derivatives land. Yeah, this is definitely a different <laughs> universe for sure. Yeah, it's totally different. So I guess that's what's cool about us, right? Like we kind of talk about it all. You know what I mean? Oh um, yeah. Dude, on top of that, this is like a the, the derivative sector in crypto is like completely overlooked, mm. and it hasn't gone through like its its like initial bull run, uh, really. And it At might all. not, it it might not this sector just because or for this bull run just because it's so new, but but it's so it significantly important that we can't like overstate how important this market is. Yeah, I don't think like what we're about to present or like this information about this sector is really like, I wouldn't categorize this as like the next big thing you have to like be putting your money in in the short term. Yeah, for I mean? sure. Absolutely not. It's more like for sure this market is going to go up or this sector is going to go up with the rest of the market, just like all cryptos do, you know, as the market tides rise, everything goes up along with it. Mm -hmm. Similar to how in 2017, you know, NFTs were around, Decentraland was around, but nobody really was, there was no mass hysteria about yeah. the metaverse back then or NFTs, right? Yeah, that's right. But the prices still went up just by affiliation. But now here we are in 2021, the freaking mania is here, dude. Like the metaverse is huge. The NFT space is huge. So I think that's what's happening here with this sector. It's going to go up, but that narrative won't spread throughout until the next cycle, I think. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. The, the thing that we try to equate this to, it's like investing in chain link in 2017 where nobody was talking about chain link mm -hmm. and in, in a sense that nobody understood the value of chain link, but all of a sudden in 2021, you start seeing every single project inter integrating with chain link. Right. And if we had understood the value of chain link in 2017, then it would have been a no brainer. So that's what we're doing with the derivatives market. If we understand the value of derivatives, and it's coming to crypto and understanding like the implications of that, then it's pretty easy to understand how big this, this sector in the crypto space can get. And yeah. when we say big, we mean bigger than pretty much everything we've seen so far. I agree. By, there's actually evidence to support that claim. For yeah, sure. for sure. So what the hell are we talking about? So we're talking about a uh, derivatives market. So what is a derivative? So I'll just read you what the Investopedia say about derivatives so it's a financial security with a value that is reliant upon or derived from an underlying asset or group of assets the derivative itself is a contract between two or more parties and the derivative derives its price from fluctuations on the underlying asset so the most common common underlying assets for derivatives are stocks bonds commodities currencies interest rates and market indexes and these assets are purchased through brokerages so this is all stuff that I think everyone watching and listening right now has seen before, has actually interacted with, right? So mm -hmm. pretty much everything is, is sort of like a form of derivative. Like a stock is a derivative, is a value derived by its asset, which is the company, right? That's why you would buy that stock. That's sort of what we're dealing with here. But in the case of opium, it's basically anything that you can... Basically, anyone can make a derivative now with Opium's protocol. Yeah, which is interesting in itself because, because like mostly like these complex financial tools are only like at the bank's disposal, right? Like this is how this is how banks and like right. institutional level servicing, like insurance and mortgage companies and stuff, are able to do the things that they do because the banks have these instruments to hedge against like the wild potential of the market, you know. So like. We could we could have these low interest rate mortgages and stuff like that because right. they package all these mortgages into these like these these instruments that allow you to allow like they, they put them in the market and allow people to inject more liquidity to them or mm -hmm. whatever. Just stabilize the interest yield for them, 
without that, without this huge derivatives like ecosystem, we wouldn't have the lives we like and all the luxuries we enjoy today. You know what I mean? Like sure. a, a stable, a stable interest rate for a mortgage is huge. Uh, mm-hmm. Or think of uh, the energy sector right now in Texas. We we just experienced a, a freeze, unlike anything I think anyone alive has experienced in terms of Texas, right? Mm-hmm. And it completely shut down our electrical grid. And yeah. Those who are were le- who relied on the market's price of electricity had like a ten thousand dollar bill over a week. Ouch! <laughs> and so, so we we heavily re- rely on these stable yield curves in order to like live our our lives in a in a predictable way. Mm. And so that's why these these derivatives are important. And the fact that anybody with you know with access to the internet can make a derivative product an instrument. Uh, that's that's huge, and that plays a huge part in the whole decentralizing everything, right? Yeah. So it's just that's the only real question mark I have. Like, so these protocols are opening the accessibility to all these these tooling. So obviously, there's going to be like a huge influx of like junk as well. Oh, for sure. At least at least the beginning, right? Because this is largely like a mis like a largely misunderstood uh, sector. <laughs> Unless you're like you have an experience in like you know deep finance career, but more than likely there's actually going to be like a an economy, like an economic incentive for people that want to become these contract underwriters. Just like there's economic incentives to become like a well, like a like a one of the ecosystem participants, like for the graph. What mm-hmm. are they called? Like delegators, delegators, or indexers. And... Yeah, these these are all just roles. These are basically yeah. jobs. They're just roles that decentralized ecosystems need participants to fulfill in order for the protocol to work right so having said that like yeah damn this is going to be interesting to see like how how this is structured from a decentralized perspective yeah for sure yeah it's going to be fucking wild dude like i can't wait to see it but yeah this this is how we know like we're super early because there isn't even like any kind of like we can't even imagine what that's going to look like yet yeah yeah and well maybe we can (laughs) it's just not matured you know and then on top of it, this this particular opium, they also do insurance too, right? Yeah, they do insurance. And okay. and just to show you kind of like what you're talking about, I man, in, in terms of market participants for the insurance. So they have essentially three products, right? Derivatives, swaps, and insurance. And yeah. for a market participant, you could be a liquidity provider in this pool of insurance where people purchase insurance from this pool. And uh, and by purchasing that insurance, the pool gets the rewards from the purchasers. Mm-hmm. And and then in case of a a default in terms of like in in this example, if you're holding tether and tether price goes from a dollar to ninety cents, well, mm-hmm. because this person bought insurance, that loss, which in this case from a hundred dollars or from a thousand dollars, that loss is a hundred bucks. You get that those losses from the insurance, right? Thereby mm-hmm. insuring your, your funds. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, is that this didn't come from a bank. It came from a pool of participants. Yeah. yeah. So this is, is just one component of decentralization. Yeah. It's actually incredible. Like there's just going to be so much more like the, the crypto revolution is just like the, the allowance for so much more flexibility for your own personal wealth. You know, this, yeah. this does not exist in the real world today. Yeah. You literally, in order to make your 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 personal accrued wealth like multiply and work for you, you have to actually put in some like real serious work. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? You gotta go start, you gotta go be an entrepreneur, dude. Yeah. You gotta go invest in properties and you gotta start, you know, getting populating them with some tenants and like, you know, yeah. do all that shit, right? Like actual work. Tough, real hard work. But in a lot of cases in these decentralized ecosystems, you simply just need to allocate. You know what I mean? It's really yeah. not that. Difficult. It's a different form of work. In this case, it's like financial work. If you have finance, if you have financial like assets, then you can put them to work. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it's a different form of work, but it's the same kind of work. Like you still need to to collect funds in order to support a decentralized ecosystem because that's how you do it in the case of this pool. Going back to the derivatives, because that's where um, everything is like stemming from. I'll put this link in the description. It's a definitely interesting read, but this has been covered a number of times before. But just to give you an an example 
of how big the derivatives market is. Here's cryptocurrencies. Right now, it says it's $244 billion. We all know it's $2 trillion now. So this is like significantly old. Um, but just put a 10x on this and you'll... So basically, uh, what's $2 trillion here? What's a good example? Here's $3.8 trillion. So basically a quarter of this or a third of this. Actually, closer to half. But so think of this as the cryptocurrency market. And let's scroll down and look at what derivatives look like. This is global real estate here in terms of market size. This is a global wealth, right? And then here's derivatives, right? If you keep scrolling, this is the entire derivatives market, right? It's the biggest market in the world. Mm. And so that is what's coming to crypto. So again, that's how big it is. And just to kind of summarize everything we've talked about so far, Derivatives smooth out returns and losses and therefore preventing systemic liquidation events and financial crisis. So that's mm -hmm. how we're able to get stable interest rates for our mortgages, right? Yeah. And for energies, you know? And that's why like that market became so big, just because it's just too damn powerful, too damn useful. Like it, you're, you're, you're incentivized to kind of like overdo it a little bit <laughs> in a yeah. lot of cases. Like there's obvious historical evidence of that like you could easily overdo it well, you know you could just keep you know creating these derivatives on top of derivatives on top of derivatives and it just like turns into this weird fucking like thing yeah it's not even real you know at that point it's just like totally it's just like some other tier of speculation you know? yeah 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 <laughs> but it works it, it, it works as long as we all agree it works you know what i mean as long as all the protocols like are, are functioning and I don't know. As long as there's like no like intentional fraud to right. like lie to the system, you know, then, then it works. But fuck, man, like for sure, this is going to come to crypto just because of like how, you know, how, how, what's the word like fluid these assets are. You yeah. Know? And not only yeah. that, like there's cryptos worth billions of dollars and they're just memes. So <laughs> if you extrapolate that to the craziness of the existing derivatives market and apply it to the crypto world, we're going to have like, derivatives based on memes memes and nfts right like yeah. it's it's going to get definitely squirrely and probably potentially bigger in the crypto like as a platform than the traditional finance as a platform for sure 100 percent. and so if we were trying to equate how big it can get like let's just start with the traditional finance right so for example the global derivatives market is about 10 times larger than that of the credit market and 20 times larger than that of global gdp so the typical market size ratio between money, debt, and derivatives is 1 to 10 to 100, which means that in a tip, typical financial market, the total market for derivatives is about 100x larger in comparison. So that, if you go back to this article, you can kind of see that in a visual form. So having said that, if we're looking at 100x in terms of market size, then you look something like, uh, you look at opium, worth $42 million dollars. Like this is not even a pixel in in this chart here, mm. right? It's not even like not even a pixel, right? And we're talking about these squares worth a billion dollars. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's hard to tell who's gonna win out. I mean, and there's there's a lot of them. So don't don't think that uh, obviously there's DYDX, right? Synthetics. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of players here, right? And we have market caps up in in you know close to three billion dollars. So it's hard to say who's actually going to win out. But nonetheless, if derivatives end up being successful in the crypto space, you know, $2 billion is going to be a nothing burger come in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Similar to like what we're seeing with the NFT space. It's almost like if you were, if you were allocating into the NFT sector three, four months ago, you're getting handsomely rewarded today <laughs> for <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Largely, you couldn't miss really. You could have hit anything that had NFT on its landing page yeah you freaking hit a bullseye you know so it's kind of the same scenario like these these this market tends to like move in, in sectors you know and like they tend to, to all like rally together yeah you know, every now and then one might stand out from the pack and like just totally go nuclear you know like for instance like in the layer two sector the one who pulled that off was matic you know matic just completely crushed the competition and took off but the rest of them still kind of like are trickling up with it. But yeah, you know, every now and then there's just definitely a winner, you know, so for it's sure. too early to call who that winner will be for this sector. Yeah. But regardless, we got to keep our eyes on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
take a look at the tokenomics here. So the minted supply of opium will be a hundred million. The distribution is sixty percent for active users, sixteen percent for investors and advisors, fourteen percent for the opium team, and ten percent governance reserve funds. Um, so like we said earlier, the the huge portion of opium uh, allocation is for active users. So basically anyone participating in the decentralized governance and ecosystem of the product itself are going to get rewarded. So this is pretty good. And, and I mean, you made a comment that the, the allocation for the team seems to be, be getting smaller and smaller as like new projects arise. Yeah. So it could be that all these projects are learning from each other in the sense that giving more to the community is probably more uh, advantageous for everyone involved than, mm-hmm. uh, you know, having teams that used to allocate like 30% or more of the tokens. Yeah. Larger percentage of allocation, the larger like or the larger risk, like from a community perspective, like, oh man, these guys, if they do rug us, we're fucked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's been, there's been examples of the past where like m- maybe, uh, a decentralized protocol the, the founding team does rug or at least they like detach themselves from the organization but because the community owns enough of the share they're still able to pick up the pieces and rebuild and create something even way more magnificent than the, even the founders and you know envision like that actually can happen yeah you know, that's so crazy about this space so but yeah by by this team allocation slowly getting smaller and smaller and smaller that's making that scenario much more you know feasible which is what we want in a decentralized ecosystem, right? We don't want the founding members to totally just like that's right control the future, you know? Yeah, and if you go on the website, it says anyone can construct derivatives with custom parameters and Oracle solutions. So uh, if anyone on the Opium team is watching this and wants to come on to explain what a person like, you know, Iman or I wanted to create a derivative, what would that look like? I mean, we couldn't we couldn't think of an example as to like why you and I would create derivatives, but uh, apparently they... Anyone can create d- derivatives. We just don't know. We can't give you an example of what that would look like. Yeah, but I promise you, like, if, if the rewards were good enough, like, we'd figure it out, right? Oh, like, for sure. <laughs> oh, of course. Like, yeah, like, oh, shit. Like, there's, it, you know. It's like there's maybe there's a derivatives to- market based on, like, NFTs or metas out there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so, yeah. Uh, ecosystem partners and uh, the team. Uh, where's the team here? Here it is. It's a huge team. Um, so yeah, I think that covers everything we wanted to talk about. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure you like, and subscribe, follow us on Twitter at the block runner and also at metazone IO comment. Let us know what you think about opium or let us know which derivative product you're really looking at. And, and we're we'll probably keep- going to talk about Barnbridge tomorrow too, just because we made a video on them a few months right. ago and they're starting to release some of their initial derivative product. So it's, I think it's time we revisit, especially now that the conversation is like fresh on the line. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, guys, stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next video. All right. Peace.